Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine and Happy New Year. 2021 is finally upon us and we can leave that in the back. Definitely want to get rid of that. Streamside here to start our week. Actually, this is the way I've been fishing the last couple of weeks. My last fish of 2020 was a rainbow trout right along this stretch. Decided to come back here on New Year's Day. First fish of 2021, rainbow trout. My good friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy, usually covers the sweet water. He's out this week taking care of some family commitments. God bless you, George. So I figured I might as well start with one of the things that I enjoy doing. I have since the pandemic, a lot of the salty guys that I know started fishing freshwater come the start of the pandemic. And it happens to be a great way to start the new year because let's look at it. Black sea bass closed as of 1231. Winter flounder, and there were some good bites on winter flounder for folks wanting to score something for the table. That's also closed. And of course, back bay stripers. And we're getting some good action on, on, on the back bay stripers, guys fishing for white perch. So why not turn back to the fresh water? I know I'm not the only one. I'm here in Monmouth County, coastal county in New Jersey, plenty of stock trout to go out and enjoy yourself and mild wet weather to start the new year, so that's fantastic. I also spoke with Nick. He said he and his buddy Justin, down in Ocean County, they've been finding one of the impoundments, he won't tell me where, but he's been finding some good crappie action, uh, as well as countless perch, some pickerel, and some largemouth bass, catching them on the soft plastics and also the jerk baits. My buddy Jeff, Captain Jeff, runs a boat out of Barnegat. He went down to Atlanta County, took his son John Evans into another impoundment down there. They were looking for trout, Young John scored himself a nice pickerel. Same thing if you go down into Cape May County, think of locations like Ponder Lodge. The New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife does a fantastic job of stocking these local water bodies with trout throughout the year and throughout the fall, which leaves them stocked and ready to go. One of the things I've been throwing, light tackle, a blue fox spinner on some of these local water bodies, especially when the water's moving a little bit more. Real light outfit, I pulled out my old classic Fluger President spinning reel. And this is an Abu Garcia um, uh, villain rod. If you can find one of these, I love this thing. But it's real light tackle and it's real light line. I think I've got eight pound braid uh, tied to eight pound J braid fluoro. I know some of the trout purists are gonna say, you're, you're still too heavy. I know I'm too heavy. It's, it's still too heavy, but my eyes are going. And if, I'm not gonna carry this whole tackle box down to the water with me. That's where my glasses are. You know what I'm talking about. You get over 50 years old, you start to understand. Plus, I'm cheap. If I want to get some of these spinners back, I'm catching them on these branches. The heavier the line, the less it's going to break when I'm pulling it and trying to get my lures back. So keep that in mind. You need that 2021 saw, uh, freshwater fishing license. Might as well go get it. Take advantage of all this stocking opportunity. I believe it's uh, $22 for the, for the freshwater license. $22.50 for the license, $10.50 for the trout stamp. If you're a resident in New Jersey, I highly recommend it. Get out there and do it. And like I said, you know, the one big thing is sea bass is closed, winter flounder is closed, back bay stripers are closed. You can still go out in the front beaches and catch some striped bass. There are some stragglers, mostly smaller fish, the smaller residents, the schoolies, the runts, the rats, whatever you want to call them. But still, guys, they're giving it a shot. Mammoth, Ocean, Atlantic, and Cape May County. Mostly sandy limitations. The tins and teasers. Lighten up, right? Make sure you have that teaser. Also, the Kettle Creek swing shads. Those small paddle tails on a light jig head. Or maybe the tsunami swim shads. The smaller storm shads. But you can pick a few fish off. Mostly small fish. Uh, high teens, low 20s. Inches, I'm talking. But those fish are still there and still available. Hopefully, they're going to sit with us. Um, you've also got, of course, the white perch action. And that's where we're finding out about some of those stripers in the back. Uh, ever since Oyster Creek closed a couple of years ago, I, I wonder about how many of those stripers are coming back and wintering over in the Toms River. Talking to Dennis at Hookhouse Bait and Tackle, he said there were quite a few of them going up into the new year in the back. But right now it's that white perch bite. Dennis says the white perch bite on the Toms River, primarily nighttime, right at dusk into the darkness. We're finding out more of those white perch down into locations like the Mullica, the Great Egg, also the Cahansey and the Morris down in South Jersey. Now I know of some Sharpies that go up uh, along the Raritan in some places. I'm wondering if there might be some white perch uh, right out there on the Raritan, that branch in front of Rutgers University. I know guys are fishing there all the time. So that white perch does provide an option for you. Bloodworms, grass shrimp, live killies, 
Several shops are still carrying the bloodworms. I talked to Akira at True World up in Bayonne. He's got them for his customers. Dennis is getting in bloodworms on a weekly basis. So is Dave at Upsecan Bay. And of course, he's got the Achilles and some grass shrimp as well, if you want to give those white perch a shot. But again, moving forward to the front options with the boats that are heading out along the coast, the ones that are still heading out, it's primarily talk. All right, if you go central in North Jersey, Ocean and Monmouth County, some of the boats are going offshore for cod, maybe Pollock, some ling, and of course the porgies. Some of the porgies are jumbos, and I believe that's what the big Jamaica is still doing. Uh, Ralph Lair of the Last Lady, last I heard he was doing some blackfish trips, but he's also looking for cod and Pollock. So you got that option. Most of the better tog action has been farther to the south. Uh, Southern Ocean County, Atlantic and Cape May County, Atlantic City Reef, and of course, off those reef sites off of Delaware, with an easy reach of Lewis and Indian River Inlet. Some guys still heading out of Cape May, of course. We've been talking about that in recent weeks. Pete Adams let me know that he and his son Chris jumped aboard the Porgy 4 out of South Jersey Marina last week. 24 incher, believe it won the pool. Congratulations. They were using slider rigs eight ounces of lead, eight ounces in roughly 100 feet of water, says to me they had a pretty good day, nice conditions. Keep an eye on the weather forecast. Look at those sea conditions and get yourself a trip early uh, uh, in, the, in the equation. Because again, we're still under this COVID pan pandemic thing. So folks have to register. They have to get the reservations first before they jump on board. I'm gonna be fishing with Captain Bobby Bogan on The Gambler next Wednesday. He's doing some hardcore togging trips on Saturdays and Wednesdays. So these guys are still eking it out on those blackfish grounds. The Jamaica 2 as well, the Norma K and other boats like that. Now I'm wondering, if Thursday we don't hear a little conversation about blackfish when the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council meets in a virtual environment, the Zoom meeting, Holly Weird Squares, the Brady Bunch. It's a strange place, but I know of one guy, uh, you've seen it on social media, there's been some discussion about blackfish. And I'm wondering if I'm going to hear about it when I tune in to that webinar on Thursday night. If you've got some topics that want to, you want to bring up, get off your chest. Thursday, January 7th, 5 o'clock, New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council. They meet remotely, online, so you can sit back and have your questions answered. Go get the full story at thefisherman.com. I put it out this week. If you get the email alerts, you got that on Tuesday morning, I think. But you go to thefisherman.com and look up the story, New Jersey News for January 2021. And you'll find out more information about that. If we get any information uh, regarding black sea bass, porgies, summer flounder, that's where it's going to be found out. And that's the information I will share. But again, I highly recommend to you guys in the salt, just like me, like I said, I've been getting my, my hump busted a little bit going, oh, look at him, he's fishing in fresh water. I was like, yeah, that's how I rinse my waders off at the end of the season. But I am a fish killer. Made my own little uh, uh, stringer. <laughs> but I'll tell you, some folks talk about they don't like rainbow trout. It's not very good. I think it's very good. Uh, the first thing that I'll do, once it's on the stringer, if I've decided I've, I've had enough, keep in mind most of these streams uh, and lakes and ponds where these fish are, are stocked, it's four fish at nine inches, but make sure you check before you start fishing your water body to make sure. I know there's a sign right here on the tree that tells me I've got four to nine inches. I'll take out the buck knife right off the bat when I'm ready to leave, go right from the anal vent all the way up to the head, cut it open, pull out those guts. Next thing I do, I'm reaching into the tackle box and I'm taking out a scaler. I'll scale that rainbow trout right there in the stream. That's already ready to be cooked as soon as I bring it home because I'll bring it home, lay it on a ceramic um, a grill tray that I'll use outside on the charcoal, mind you, not the propane. The charcoal gives it such a great flavor. I'll put it right on there and I'll take some rosemary out of the herb garden because that's still growing like weeds. The rest of the stuff is done. Stuff it with, rain, uh, with rosemary, some thin sliced lemon. Then on that trout, I'll cut it vertically five, six times. Layer a couple of cuts on one side, do the same thing on the other. Rub it with olive oil, just some salt and pepper. If you've got a salmon rub that you like, uh, something with some paprika and brown sugar, it's fantastic because it makes, it makes the skin taste so sweet. But I'll just cook it on that ceramic grill. Six minutes, five minutes on each side. Flip it over, bring it back in, and you can just peel the meat right away from the bones. So good, trust me on that. If you're a saltwater fan and you don't like going freshwater fishing because you don't think that, I'm telling you, try this. Give yourself a, a shot at these rainbow trout cooked on the charcoal outside on the grill. You'll thank me for it later. If I get one of these trout, 
I'll have to show you the tips. I'll show you what I do with it in the future. I'm going to give that a shot right now. But until then, enjoy the weather in the next couple of days. It's supposed to be really nice, very mild. Perfect time to get out here and try for some of those fish, some of those stripers on the front beaches. And I tell you what, I'm telling you, go get that trout stamp and your resident license and enjoy the sweet water. Until next week, I'm Jim Hutchinson. I'll catch you again next week at thefisherman.com. Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.